Praise the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. A warm welcome to one and all of you and I greet you in the name of our loving Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm very happy and privileged to stay connected through these sessions and we are one family. We are always going to do the right thing, <clears throat> meditating from the Word of God. And we are here in the presence of the Holy Ghost, who is leading us always from the front. And these are the sessions where you hear the voice of God, the voice of the Holy Spirit. And the more you pay attention, the more you benefit. The more you ignore, you're actually losing many things in life. Why? Because you don't get another chance. You don't get another opportunity. Yeah, we all get this one life to live on earth, to stay in eternity for ages before God. Yeah, how many of you know that <laughs> the time that we live on earth is very, very short span of time. Many people don't understand when they make the statement, hey, it's one life, man, short life, come on. Yes, short life, compared to what it is short, compared to the life in eternity, yeah? Eternity, okay, fine. The age of Earth is 3.54 billion years. Can you all agree that the eternity is going to be as um, old as the the age of um, what is it? The age of um, um, the Earth. Fine. Even then also you compare and see your eight years or 70 years, your 40 years, doesn't matter. It's point not, 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 not one percentage of what you're going to live in eternity. And that's why we keep emphasizing, hey, don't lose this opportunity, my brother, my sister. Yeah, pay attention and do the right things in life. Therefore, you don't end up with anything that is, you know, harmful. Um, in eternity harmful in eternity in the sense we are clearly talking from the perspective of the lake of fire incident yeah the more you understand this lake of fire <laughs> the easier it is for you to understand you know how harmful and how dangerous it is it endangers your life okay a warm welcome to the series where we are dealing through the subject of atonement and uh, the more you understand atonement the more closer you get to Jesus the more closer you get to Jesus the more light you get on your dark side of life the more light you get on your sinful deeds the more light you get on your sinful deeds the more sanctified and holy you become because you get an opportunity to repent and reconcile with the father the more you get into repentance and reconciliation with the Father and the companionship of the Holy Spirit, the more closer you are there in eternity to live with God in the city of God forever and ever. Mansions are being built for us. Some of you will be part of God's army and your horses or horse, white horses are being fed Yeah, with all green pastures and grasses and all that. <laughs> You're all wondering where it is written. Revelation 19, you take and read. Yeah. And your, your horse is waiting. Some of you want to be part of that army of God, isn't it? The commander's army. You can see in the book of Joshua, I think, chapter 10 or 11. I don't understand. I don't, I don't remember. Right? God's army. Joshua meets with God's, um, that the leader of God's army. And uh, that's Jesus. And I, and I also preached a series about that. Very short series. Yeah. Please, always... Listen to such sessions, you will understand. All right, let's stick to the subject of atonement. What is the subject of atonement? Subject of atonement is all about understanding how much it cost for God <clears throat> to send his only son. Um, while we were yet sinners, God loved us. While we were yet sinners, God makes the choice to, you know, save us and lead us in this life of salvation. While we were at sinners, some of us were yet to be born when Jesus was 
sent to this earth. Yeah, that tells how much of love and compassion and how much it costs for Jesus is what we understand through this atonement. And why all of these have been demonstrated? Why all of these promises have been fulfilled? It's nothing but to give you a chance to live your life in eternity. No, there are reasons. Absolutely. I cannot think of any reason. Okay. Now, we are in the process of meditating from Leviticus 16. And we did enough study from verses 1 to 4. I think we spent already 4-5 or five hours on this 4 verses. Yeah. And we learnt a lot, isn't it? Especially the previous session, we learnt a lot about the holy linen tunic and linen trousers on the body and linen sash and the linen turban. These are the holy garments. And what does it mean to the believer in Christ from the new covenant perspective is what we have touched. And we covered pretty much everything that the Holy Spirit <clears throat> wants me to speak. Right? I hope you uh, you have tuned up to that session. If not, please listen before you listen to the upcoming verses because every single verse, every single meditation is like revelation from the kingdom of heaven. And you get that privilege. I get that privilege. And we all need to consider how much God respects you and me. <clears throat> Yeah, you and I don't deserve to win God's respect, do we? I don't think so. And that's why I want you to be always, always make that stupendous effort to talk to God, right? The more you talk to him, the more you understand. The more he talks back to you, draw yourself nearer to God and he draws yours, he himself nearer to you. James 4, 8 says, and I love that verse. Verse number 5. And he shall take from the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats as a offering and one ram as a burnt offering. Yeah, This is all encompassed within that same thing which we read from verse number 3. Aaron shall come into the holy place by the blood of an young bull <clears throat> as a sin offering and a ram as a burnt offering. Yeah, <clears throat> And then he shall take from the congregation... See, that comes from Aaron's ration or Aaron's budget, right? Now, this is demanded from the congregation because that's for the sanctification of Aaron, the priesthood, right? But this is for the sanctification of the congregation for whom Aaron will be entering into the presence of God to hear the message of God and deliver it to the people. Right? And to show that respect and sanctify him, glorify him on the behalf of congregation. Clearly, Aaron was mediating between God and his holy presence versus the sins of the people that are awaiting at the doors of the outer sanctuary or the doors of the inner sanctuary, outer sanctuary. Therefore, God demands the consecration of the congregation to. Right, and it's the right thing for 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 our, for a God to do, isn't it? Yeah, and He shall take from the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats as a sin offering and one ram <coughs> as a burnt offering. Right, and the offering is very important. Why? Because Again, the next verse, Aaron shall offer the bull as a sin offering, which is for himself and make atonement for himself and for his house. I've already covered that. This is how the Holy Spirit leads us, right? Sometimes we get too much into the spiritual sense. Use a little bit of your common sense. That's enough. And trust me, I didn't even read verse 6 yet. Perhaps I did that, but I don't remember it by heart. Yeah, It's for, it's for Aaron and his household. They need sanctification. Why? Because he's mediating. If you are the elder of the house, you are the elder, elder of the church, you are the <clears throat> deacon, you're involved in God's ministries, God's teaching. Beloved, I'm telling you this. Listen to me. You got to first of all check on your 
spiritual status and last session also i told that i gave the reference from 1 john chapter 2 and if you read the whole chapter john is explaining beautifully from the word of god on your spiritual status and he provides the checklist also that helps us right the test of knowing christ is in you or not christ, knowing him means christ the then the spiritual state your mindset and do you love the world yeah are you part of the deceptions of the last hour are you part of it or deceptions of the last hour is having any root in you yeah does it have any ground in you are you man of truth is truth of god that is the laws and commandments from the bible do you adhere or the laws and commandments of the bible or part of you are you the children of god are you the child of god are you the person who walks in the love and in, in in spirit and wisdom galatians chapter 5 uh ephesians chapter 5 you read all of these and when you that's why we always keep recommending no please read the word of god why because the word of god is nothing but a checklist it purifies you it cleanses you purify and cleanse your heart you sinners james talks in chapter 4 and verse 8 purify how the purification happens many people think they attend sunday service church yeah purification happens they take part in commun- communion or oh, cleansing happens what monthly once you do this and your it's got that's good enough for all that you did you don't fill the fuel in your ta- tank when it is empty or about to get empty the needle shows right yeah the blessing is the needle works what if the needle doesn't work <laughs> the malfunction in the petrol needle imagine what would be your state yeah it shows full and then you start moving to a journey and then in the middle of the road it, the vehicle stopped and um and what do you do you call up some helpline and all that or you you know some some bunch of rascals you know cross your path and they loot your money and they do anything they want probably you are going with your family there are there are ladies around and anything could happen right that needle is very important and that needle is nothing but what i have told um uh, explained from galatians 5 ephesians 5 and uh, 1 john chapter 2 these are all nothing but the needle that's helping you to check on your spiritual status your tank is full or not you are full of anointing or not you are filled with anointing the gifts of the holy spirit or not yeah are you being led by the fruit of the spirit or not are you walking in adherence to the laws and commandments of god so that blessings cling on to you else what happens what's the opposite to blessing curse clings on to you revelation 20 to 14 are you the child of disobedience are you the child of obedience how do you know this without reading the gospel make the word of god travel inside of you make the word of god to justify make the word of god to judge you I love the word of God. I love the Holy Spirit to remind you from the scriptures and I love the Holy Spirit to do that fantabulous job. The Holy Spirit does it all the time, but we don't allow him, right? Or we ignore or we don't pay attention to his voice. Therefore you end up lying on the lap of demons and the unclean spirits dwell in you. As how Samson was enjoying lying on the lap of Delilah, the prostitute can you believe a man of god going and lying on a prostitute's lap nonsense can you imagine if paul or peter would be doing that or john the disciple would be doing it or john the baptist would be doing that huh and they say that our oh, flesh is weak what to do jesus himself told no imagine if paul is making such a statement and then enters into the synagogue or any other and preaches and the fire of fiery preaching and writes all the epistles <laughs> and then on the other hand he says what to do in the epistle also he writes what to do you know my flesh is weak uh, you also try uh, try your best it's okay that's a nicolaitan preaching nicol nicolas was one of paul's disciple and he spoke about grace where gr- sin multiplies grace multiplies to deliver you but people twist it saying that hey sin can multiply because grace is anyway there available to multiply and deliver us don't worry this became the preaching and teaching of many churches today many christendom many congregations are you know encouraging people fine no problem we are all living in cosmopolitan world man metropolitan city and modern world and do whatever you want but then don't forget to confess huh huh 
don't forget to uh, you know tell god i'm sorry and then continue nonsense is this what you call it as consecration is this what you call as confession and repentance repentance it's not it's not repentance it's regret you just feel sorry and you give that fly kiss to jesus who is hanging on that wooden cross which you have hung right in the middle of your hall and that's what you think is consecration pity on you that's all i can say and these guys if they would be giving all this fly kiss to the lord almighty after getting inside inner sanctuary you know what happens that's why i started with uh, abihu and uh, nadab and abihu the two sons of aaron right and in fact the uh, leviticus 16 itself starts with that how furious it is or how terrible it is to taste the fury of god the anger of god the wrath of god or oh, that's old covenant who said i will read john 336 for you and then i will come back here many people think oh only old covenant all this fire will come and all that right john 3 36 John 3:16 all of us know for God so loved the world that he gave his only son begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life do you know what is opposite of this whoever does not believe him they insult the blood covenant you know what happens to them John 3:36 happens to them he who believes in the son has everlasting life and he who does not believe the son shall not see life but the wrath of god abides on him how can you distinguish uh, new covenant wrath is different from old covenant wrath new covenant god is different from old covenant god tell me no right that means the wrath is also same in fact it will be even more terrible if god is going to judge you i mean judge aaron and all the people there uh, who are standing out the out, outer sanctuary and inner sanctuary for violating that protocol which he had given even these two sons the two fellows i am not supportive of uh, you know what they did i am always on god's side god does everything right yeah god is perfect i am not against it but look at those fellows what they have done they got over excited and in order to serve god they took that censer and they added that incense and the fragrance they want to show god couldn't even withstand it how come you are not careful you know whom you are serving do you know anything about my reverence and sovereignty i am the god who runs the universe man you are just a speck in another inside another speck that's earth and not not in that way our god is very humble god but he wants that he does he says i deserve that respect where is my honor where is the respect that is due to me and he kills them man who are you tell me after sending his son jesus all the tortures he went and there are 1050 laws and commandments this prescribed in the bible in the new testament and you keep on violating all the 1050 and then you go and give that flying kiss and say that hey dude forgive me some people you know treat the father in heaven like dude <laughs> wrath of god is the same fire that will consume you but this time it's not that fire which came from heaven but it will be lake of fire you will be thrown there you want to wait for the day of judgment and you want to test whether i'm speaking the truth or not go ahead i mean to say go to hell that's exactly what bible says oh some people are saying oh how can you be so rude saying go to hell okay i will read from the word of god what it means revelation 22:11 he who is unjust let him be unjust still still means what you know continue continue enjoy enjoy being alcoholic enjoy flirt with that female enjoy going to that adultery uh, or a prostitute's house flirt with that uh, that man without your no- husband's knowledge continue continue hmm? and be uh, who is filthy let him be filthy still all unclean things inside and coming and acting before god on that communion day oh god please forgive me next day morning you will be back to the same bribery business he who is righteous let him be righteous he who is holy let him be holy forget the second half first half you know what does it mean let him be filthy still let him be unrighteous still let him be unholy still ah uh, let him be careless still and go to hell uh, even after reading 66 books you have made a choice to be unholy unrighteous and all that still you would not come to your senses 
brother, your choice. Please go to hell. Now I told it with little respect. But I don't think God is going to speak in this tone <laughs> when you stand before him in the white throne judgment. Hey, you know what? You and I are the same. Whatever I'm talking applies to me. Applies to me first and then to you. Therefore, no offense. No offense. Yeah. And you are the congregation. And therefore, God demands the sanctification from you. I'm talking about the elders. You being the elder, please be very careful because you're going to be judged from the Bible. Every letter, not, a, not only word, every letter you will be asked for an account. And perhaps that's one of the reasons I took enough time to rectify a lot of errors in me. I still do have errors. Nobody can say that anyone is free of sin. I, I will be called a liar. 1 John 1, 7 to 10 says that. Yeah, But I had to rectify my, many of the errors, passive sins, the list of things. 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 9, Mark 7, 21 to 23, Galatians 5, 17 to 21, Colossians 3, 5 to 9. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10. Make a note of this and read before you go to bed today. Huh? You'll understand. If one of those are lingering to your heart, or even at the corner of your heart, you will not make it to heaven. Bible is going to judge us strictly. Why? Because more it is given, the more it's going to be asked. You're the elder. You'll be watched out. And how about the congregation? For example, you're, you're the member of the family. You're not the elder, right? And... You're, you're the member of a church. You're not the leader of the church. Fine. Are you going to be exempted? Oh, fine. You're not a leader. You're not anywhere. Fine, fine. It's okay. God is going to pamper you? No. You're going to be equally judged. <clears throat> and that's why God demands the offering from Aaron first. Yeah, in verse 3. And then he reminds again in verse 6. And he clarifies. See how beautiful, no? Bible is beautiful. He clarifies you. Because people would be scratching their head. Why another uh, ram? And uh, Yeah, wait, wait, wait. That's for Aaron and his household because he is the elder. But you and your household also shall offer sin offering and burnt offering. Yeah. And that's exactly what Job was doing. Every single day he would come. And he would be offering to God that sin offering. He didn't know any of this. Leviticus and all was written much later. He lived in the first 500 years, even before Moses was born. Job lived during the days of Jacob. And history says he is married to Dina, one of the daughters uh, born to Jacob. History says, now if you ask me to prove with the marriage certificate, I don't have. I'm not the registrar anyway to you know, sign in that marriage certificate. I'm telling you it's history. Ignore. Okay. But the point here is about his, about his careful attitude, you know, walking in diligence. Amazing, right? What a man of God. Amazing. So much is given to us, yet you are so careless. How do you think God is going to tolerate? Yeah? Should you not tremble in fear? Yeah, sinning is okay, fine. You have gone through some sin and you repeated also certain sins few times and or many times. and At least someday come to your spiritual sense and have that sense of respect. When, you, when your boss dislikes something, I don't think you repeat it even for the next time. I don't repeat. <clears throat> I've been under a boss for almost seven or eight years, the longest tenure in my career. With that little bit of tone or sigh or smile, and the guy lives in the US, um, and very nice man, a very nice human being, um, one, of my, one of the best leaders I've seen in the corporate industry. Uh, very good human being. But then the guy also has a lot of shortcomings, short temper and this and that. With that little bit of comment and feedback and all that, I will be able to read what he is expecting from me. Yeah, sometimes with this little smile and sigh, S-I-G-H, sigh also I will be able to get what is he thinking. Because why? I give so much of importance. He's my boss. And I'm a submissive, submissive to my authorities according to the book of Romans, right? You've got to be submissive to your authorities, Bible says. And I'm always very submissive to my authorities. By nature, I'm submissive to all human beings. You know, I'm nobody. <laughs> it's all because of Christ. I am what I am. I know that. I know who I am. I don't need any any education about myself. If I'm always very humble, I know that. 
but when it comes to this authority concept i'm even more careful why because i'll be judged from the word of god yeah and i want to be very submissive submit to government romans 13 i was looking for that verse every soul be subject to the government authorities for there is no authority except from god and the authorities that ex that that exist are appointed by god whether you're in government organization or ngo or any other private organization doesn't matter your boss is appointed by god politicians appointed by god ministers appointed by god mla mps appointed by god show that respect that's it leave it to god yeah they are corrupt and all that how can god i means what you're calling god a liar you're judging god you're not judging that mla or mp or that people who are in corruption you're judging god who appoints yeah, while saying that i also end up doing the same mistake right just comes out that anger comes out no <laughs> when a new law or uh, something is passed and yeah we all make that mistakes i agree not easy right <clears throat> especially when they revise the taxation laws my goodness i get peanuts again they are wanting more money they don't reduce the petrol price my blood boils now the petrol price is 100 rupees plus in my lifetime i have never seen that <laughs> and the original barrel price per liter is less than 35 rupees which means what i end up paying almost like 65 70 rupees tax to buy that 1 liter petrol and because of that my all other you know sub commodity expenses and all in increases and my blood boils but what to do god allows it god allows it god is aware and he will make provisions for you to sur- survive and sustain and he is going to judge those guys bunch of corruption um, you know corruptionists or bunch of corruptors they are going to be judged leave it to god you don't get into judgment seat of throne sorry judgment seat of christ second corinthians 5:10 no and revelation 2011 you don't sit there and i am going to judge on god's behalf then you become a sinner you become a liar yeah you become a rebel to god are you all with me or not with me good good no tomorrow onwards you watch news and read newspaper you are not reacting okay <laughs> it's very tough but i i try to change at least in a year from now okay i'm <laughs> just kidding um see beloved our god is also very compassionate he's not expecting that change in one overnight he says that you know try man keep trying press hard towards perfection and one point of time you will become a complete man lacking nothing you will become perfect man lacking nothing james chapter 1 verse 4 i'm always talking from bible because i'm here to talk about from the bible and i will be talking through the bible only yeah no no imaginary words here now coming about the congregation now whoever are christians believers in christ it applies to you as well that you got to walk in sanctification you got to walk in consecration you got to you got to walk in holy deeds yeah but then you end up doing mistakes you end up repeating mistakes you end up sinning again but then fight hard resist the devil and he will flee away from you resist the sin say no to the sinful deeds say no to the devil keep telling no keep telling no one point of time he will stop trying maybe he will try another new pattern and maybe you fall in that new pattern again because you're not used to that uh, equipment right you did not uh, you did not visualize enough fine but you know what you will not fall the second time why now you are a stronger person you know how to handle the principalities and the powers of darknesses you know how to handle the spiritual battles you know how to handle anger you know how to handle self control you know how to handle the people who fight against you you know how to handle troubles you know how to handle trouble makers you know how how to handle some of the evil spirits fighting against you through your dreams or yeah you will never be scared you will never be disturbed you will never be confused you never will be double minded you will never be wavery james 122 you'll never be unstable philippians 16 sorry james 16 okay now we all understand why that what does the sin offering translates from the new covenant perspective sin offering translates the new covenant perspective uh, how you can translate this confess repent reconcile that's it three steps confess repent and reconcile i have spoken i i don't know which series i did that about confessions i spoke ah i spoken in that um It's genealogy and evolution of christian congregation 
from 1 John 1 7 to 10 the mannerism of confessions and what to confessions methods to confess for 12 or 13 hours I spoke only from three or four verses very very useful every one of you should listen if that is not enough there is a short series on importance of prayer how to pray I've done that it's also available in the playlist prayer series you please go listen You'll understand what is what it is to offer. Offer means what? Those that are broken heart and contrite spirit, you offer the tears of repentance, breaking down before God. I have broken down multiple times before God, more than I cried for sin. I cried thinking of God's mercy. How, how does he have such a <clears throat> tender and compassionate heart to be so tolerant with a wretch like me? When I think of that is when I break down more and I get angry on me, <laughs> really get, I go mad at me, myself, not mad at anyone. Yeah. If you are going to finger point at people or oh, because of that brother only I sent, because of this sister I didn't, because of devil, the demons, I, you blame devil, you, bl you blame the brother, sister, anybody, then you are a demon. You have never understood Jesus or the law of repentance, the law of confession, even one percentage. And you will never be holy. Yeah, guaranteed. <laughs> okay, you all understand? Verse number six is also done. He shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. Why sacrifices are presented at the door of the tabernacle of the meeting? Why? Because you are thinking, oh, he's going to tell us a very important secret. Nothing. Door is the entry for Mr. Devil. Correct? No. That's why in the, uh, uh, what to say, when people were delivered from Egypt, uh, Exodus, right? Uh, God asks to kill a uh, kill goat and uh, offer that animal's blood as sacrifice and then uh, sprinkle that blood over the lintels. Lintels, all of us know lintel, no? Which is the entrance of the door. And the door has been attached to the lintel, actually. Door doesn't stand by itself. It needs to be screwed to that lintel. And the lintel is the entrance, it's the entry. That's why even by faith, you go to, um, probably if you have the habit of praying over that water, yeah, you don't have to go to church or disturb your pastor or something like that by faith you can pray just take a cup of water and pray in the name of jesus i believe that this is the blood of christ that was offered on the cross the same blood which was sprinkled over the lintel and when the blood was sprinkled over the lintel the destructing angel had no permission to enter inside the lintel and harm any children of god any children of israel not a single person was dead but whereas egypt all the firstborn children were, you know, killed. They are dead. There is a mighty uproar in the land of Egypt. All the firstborn killed. Many people died. It doesn't mean that children of Israel are so privileged and all that. No. All are children of God. God only created Egyptians also. But then they never, uh, they never honored God. And they have never made efforts to fall in the protocol. They have been given so many chances and warning. Moses was sent. Aaron was sent so many times. I mean, they were sent so many times. But despite of that, they never paid attention. They were arrogant. They were hard heart, hard heart people. And that's why you see the distracting angel entered all over. And what a disaster it was. Even the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt lost his firstborn. <laughs> yeah, nobody can challenge God. He is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, mighty. His name is mighty and great. Great I am, he said. Who can challenge God? No one. But when the angels were about to destroy, they were scared looking at the blood. Yeah, angels of destruction. They, they bypassed. <laughs> And that's why it's been asked to, you know, that entrance of the door. I'm just stuck to the word entrance of the door. Yeah, that is the entrance. Now, from the new covenant perspective, spiritual perspective, this is definitely something that you can also practice. Old covenant method is also good. I do that. Yeah. Um, 
yeah you can sanctify with a, with as a sign of faith you can teach your little children right make little children to pray like that give that cup of water pray together with us little children yeah it doesn't matter they are 5 years old no problem 5 or 6 years old no problem teach them what is faith teach them what is to respect the blood of jesus teach them why they are supposed to pray a prayer like that teach them why the water must be sprinkled at the door at the entrance all the reasons i gave you they have therefore they understand what it means sanctification what it means you know to stay, to to make the destructing angels away from us stay away from us yeah from the you know uh, from from a from a tender age um, you you can teach them you know uh, while they are so young and tender you can teach them they will understand they will be growing in faith no nothing nothing wrong but then new covenant perspective the entrance of the door is nothing but the sensory organs i have spoken about this in a short session i have spoken about this in also some other series i really forgot body mind spirit and soul series i think spiritual composition i have spoken for 10 or 15 hours i have preached only on that five finger principle and all that i have spoken right the four finger pointing and all five sensory organs are there i won't call all of them as sensory organs but five important organs which leads you towards sin that's the entrance for the devil to travel inside your life and you got to pray asking god to consecrate you proverbs chapter 6 verses 12 to 17 it talks about the wicked man yeah who could possibly move away from being a holy person to an unholy person who could possibly move away from being a righteous person to an unrighteous person who could possibly be transformed from being you know very uh, what is it having the, that piety for god to filthy nature is what is something that you can understand and specifically talking about five organs in our body number 1 ears number 2 mouth number 3 fingers number 4 feet number 5 heart and beneath you will find a lot of things have been spoken in a indirect way number 6 is mind and number 7 i am adding eyes yeah eyes about eyes go in the bible there are so many verses right eyes is eyes are the number one sensory organs through which the lust travels and lust is so terrible that it's not at all easy do not lust is one commandment which the entire congregation failed old covenant congregation failed for 4000 years therefore eyes are very very important and lust can travel through your ears also when you keep hearing somebody else's uh, you know blabbering or exaggeration or um, uh, they are describing about their new car and all that that's why you need to pay attention to whom you are listening what you are watching what you are talking to whom you are talking right the words of your mouth also can lead you towards the negative side of life towards the side of corruption yeah and all these things travel to your mind and mind works with the spirit and the spirit is polluted there yeah and the spirit is not spirit's nature is disturbed there and slowly the spirit also gets pulled towards the worldly pleasure and spirit makes the evil spirit as his partner and they start ruling over the body and mind in a perspective that is away from the directions and in- instructions and interests of god for your life you all understand i condensed everything i've spoken 85 plus hours uh, about this body mind spirit and soul in the series that's still awaiting yeah i have lots to cover there i just left in mid- in the middle and came because i had to cover other topics and holy spirit said hey just park it there man come let's finish this and go back there that's why i've just kept left a little bit of interval i will go and continue from where i left that's my next target okay so the point is all of you are understanding me or not tell me sometimes i get that doubt five sensory organs is nothing but the entrance from the new covenant perspective although i gave a old testament reference it's much related to the new covenant perspective because your feet transports you a place where you're not supposed to go your fingers are involved in certain things for example bribery manhandling abusing accusing finger pointing all those things eyes mouth and ears i already spoke uh, and all these things are corrupting your heart the image of god 
uh, is you know the the sorry the 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 composure of your spirit is disturbed and what happens you slowly start falling apart from the love of god yeah you move away from the presence of god and what you should do every day morning when you get up yeah by faith how you sprinkle that water at the entrance of your gate and doors and you're not allowing and it works absolutely the de the demons can never enter but what about your life when you step outside the house you you cannot carry that mug of water and say i sprinkle in the name of jesus blood of jesus <laughs> you can't do that but then what travels with you are your organs the sensory organs and the transporting organs therefore you need to sanctify uh, by the blood of jesus every day morning and every day when you go to sleep also sanctify ask for god to forgive uh, you maybe there is a sin in one of your organs yeah knowingly or unknowingly is quite another thing whatever it may be sin is a sin before god sanctify and therefore lie down and ask god to give you that good sleep and when you are cleansed by the blood of jesus tell me where is the room for devil in your life why people always tell all these horrifying stories in the night he came and see still your subconscious will have all those old memories right whatever since you had been involved in the past and all these subconscious things will come as dreams forget it forget it next day morning say that you have that confidence i definitely was confessing and i am sanctified i am been washed by the blood of jesus and these dreams are all my you know sins of the past forget it because memory doesn't get erased memory is going to stay with you as long as you live your life on earth okay my time is up therefore i am planning to close yeah verse number 7 he shall take two goats and present them before the lord at the door of the tabernacle of meeting yeah that's a meeting point that's a entry point for the devil and i spoke from the perspective of new covenant standards i hope you have understood and also from the old covenant standards you can continue to still practice all right we are dealing with the subject of atonement don't you think so it's a very very heavy lifting subject and we are spending enough time and i'm glad god is leading us in this direction heavenly father we want to thank you for this wonderful and beautiful time of fellowship with you lord thank you for talking to us in a very personalized way and admonishing us with your words of exhortation and we appreciate your mercies in jesus name we pray amen god bless you subscribe to our channel get access to all our playlist share it with your friends and relatives and continue to pray for our ministries and remember me every day at least 10 seconds and please support me in your prayers god bless you